This is a neural network. It's good at classifying animals. Let's say you're inquisitive and you're trying to understand what it is doing. You're staring at this complex object. Consisting of circles connected by edges that have associated numbers. How do you make sense of this? To better understand a particular behavior of the network you might come up with a hypothesis about how it's performing that behavior. Let's say you have been observing that inputs of dog images result in the correct classification output of dog. You also observe that dog snouts get the correct output. You observe this behavior and have reason to believe that part of the network is performing dog snout detection, which helps your network perform the classification. How would you test this hypothesis? Enter causal scrubbing. Causal scrubbing is a method that attempts to answer how well does my hypothesis explain the behavior I'm observing. We will see how it does that in just a moment. At this point, it suffices to say that causal scrubbing evaluates a hypothesis by testing how well it recovers the log loss of the model. It tries to explain on a given distribution of inputs. To make precise claims about whether our interpretability hypothesis is correct we need to formalize what we mean by hypothesis. In the context of causal scrubbing a hypothesis is defined as a triplet of three things. First, a low-level graph that is our original neural network. Second, an interpretation graph. This is an abstraction of the low-level graph. A graph that captures and explains the behavior we're interested in while removing unimportant nodes. And lastly a translation function from the high-level interpretation graph to the low-level graph. With this particular notion of a hypothesis in mind, we can ask ourselves, how would we check if this hypothesis is true? Here's an example adapted from the original research article. The example hypothesis claims that the node A and B respectively represent checking whether the first and second component of the input contains a dog snout and dog tail respectively. Then the node D represents checking whether either of these conditions were true. As we can see, the value of node C is unimportant because it doesn't appear in our high-level abstraction graph as an important side note at this point. A single node in the high-level abstraction graph can refer to activations of an entire model component, i.e. multiple nodes in the low-level graph. If this hypothesis is true, we should be able to perform two types of interventions or resampling ablations. The first type is replacing the activations of nodes we deem important with activations on other inputs that are equivalent under the interpretation. Let's look at an example. If the interpretation graph claims that part of the network is performing a particular task like checking whether its input is a dog snout, we should get the same activation if we input a different input that contains a dog snout. Hence, we can run the low-level graph twice, once on the input image 1 and once on the input image 2. We then extract the activation image 2 causes node A to have and replace it in the graph run with input image 1. If our hypothesis is correct, we expect the loss to be identical for the normal model and the one we performed the intervention on. Note that in the intervened low level graph B and C are still the same. That is to say, they did not take on the values B star or C star. The second type of replacement we should be able to do is replacing the activations that are claimed to be unimportant with their activation value on any other input. Concretely, an activation that is claimed to be unimportant in our example is C. Whereas node A and B detect snouts and tails respectively, C is assumed to not help us in interpreting the model's behavior. Conversely, if C is in fact unimportant, we could sample a different data point from our dataset and replace the activation C in our original graph by the activation that was generated by the new input. We should expect the same behavior. In this way a hypothesis can be thought of as a challenge saying, I bet you can't change the loss significantly without performing interventions that I forbid. A hypothesis can be interpreted as an intervention blacklist. Let's dive deep into how causal scrubbing gets implemented.
Let's look at the parameters first. The correspondence underscore function is a function that maps high-level nodes to their respective low-level nodes. The dataset is a collection of data points to sample from. The node interpretation is the node in the high-level interpretation graph, which is a more abstract representation of the actual low-level graph. The reference input is a data point that serves as our main input for the high-level node. The function begins by mapping the high-level node, node interpretation, to its corresponding node in the low-level graph, which we'll call node actual. If node actual is an input node, the function simply returns the reference input. Otherwise, the function initializes an empty dictionary called computed input activations to store the activations of the parent nodes for node actual. For nodes that aren't directly driven by our main reference, a random data point from the dataset is chosen. This will be used to provide activations for what we term as unimportant parents. The function then loops over all parent nodes of node actual. For important parents, which are those that correspond to parents of the high-level node, the function first finds a data point that agrees with the high-level interpretation. And then, it recursively computes the activations for the high-level parent node using this agreeing data point. For unimportant parents, the function simply uses the value of the node on the random input chosen earlier. Finally, with all the computed activations in place for the parent nodes, the function calculates and returns the activation value of node actual. Okay, that was a lot let us recap what we've learned. A hypothesis can be formalized as a triplet of a low-level graph, high-level abstraction and the translation function between them. We can perform two types of interventions or resampling ablations to test our hypotheses. Replacing important activations with activations on other inputs that create the same result. Replace unimportant activations with activations on random inputs. The causal scrubbing algorithm implements these two resampling ablations. It traverses all paths through the high level abstraction graph by starting at the output node and calling run underscore scrub on the nodes recursively, all the way up towards the input node. That's it for today, thanks a lot for watching.